The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests and delighted Herod so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me, here, on a platter, the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given, and he had John beheaded in prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went and told Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. So you've all heard of uh, the concept of a second chance, right? A second chance. So King Herod had John the Baptist killed. And you read this, you heard this tragic story and most of you are very familiar with it. There's a, there's a more detailed account, I believe given in Luke's gospel, that's a little richer in the details of the story. But nonetheless, Herod is both intrigued by John the Baptist and threatened by John the Baptist. His immediate response is that he wants to kill John the Baptist. Now, Herod is the richest and most powerful man in the land. And who is John the Baptist? John the Baptist is just kind of this eccentric preacher in strange clothes, okay? But what does John have over Herod? The truth. So John proclaims the truth, and Herod is threatened by the truth. Herodias is threatened by the truth. And Salome, Herodias' daughter, So ultimately you hear the story, Herod has John killed for a series of bad reasons. The last of the bad reasons was his rash oaths that he made. And now Jesus shows up on the scene and you can just imagine Herod's fear Herod the Tretarch heard of the reputation of Jesus. And what is his conclusion? This must be John the Baptist raised from the dead. The ghost of John the Baptist is coming to get me. And so he's back into this place of fear, isn't he? Now, what's he going to do? He's going to have Jesus killed too, or he's going to cooperate in the killing of Jesus. So he's given the second chance, isn't he? Our God is a God of second chances. Even third chances. Even 
365th chances. Our God desires the conversion of sinners. Herod, a man of power, a man of reputation, has this party. You know, a party. I was reading a reflection on this. A party can be good, clean fun, right? Or a party can be occasion of boasting and bragging and pride and ultimately evil. And that's what this party turned into with the murder of John the Baptist. Today, we pray that we hear and heed and follow the second chances that God gives to us. That we don't live in fear. That we live in grace and gratitude for God's mercy and healing. That our eyes and hearts and minds are open to the prophets, the the, um, the teachers, the, the truths that God pours into us. We have a very negative lesson in the sacred scripture today. Let's learn a positive lesson from a negative experience of Herod. I want to mention before I close St. Ignatius of Loyola. And St. Ignatius of Loyola's... Um, incredibly rich gift that he's given to the church in this in the spiritual exercises and uh, you know if you've never heard of or never endeavored into the spiritual exercises there's lots of books about the spiritual exercises this process of of prayer and self-understanding and self-knowledge that uh, Saint Ignatius in some respects was like the first I won't say the first, but he was a very prominent kind of looked into how psychology and spirituality are married together. How we're mind, body, and spirit, right? And Ignatius recognized that reality and that we must get to know ourselves in order to grow spiritually. And so today, Herod didn't know himself. Herod was full of fear. Lots of money, lots of power, and no peace. Let's pray that we have the poverty and the obedience that Ignatius embraced and the peace that he embraced as well.